What is up, Iwu crew? Today, we will be covering the still unsolved disappearance of a massive Boeing 727 plane and its pilot, Ben Padilla. Our story begins in May 2003 at Luanda, Angola, a port city on the west coast of South Africa. Sitting idle in the Quattro de Fevereiro International Airport in Luanda was a Boeing 727 plane manufactured in 1975. It was unpainted aside from a stripe of blue, red, and white. It had been operated by American Airlines for nearly 25 years before its most recent owner, a Miami-based company by the name of Aerospace Sales and Leasing, purchased it. After Aerospace Sales and Leasing obtained the 28-year-old aircraft, they leased it to TAAG Angola Airlines, which would soon be the last resting place known for this massive aircraft. There, in the Quattro de Fevereiro International Airport, the 727 had been grounded and idle for nearly 14 months. During that time, it had accumulated more than $4 million in unpaid airport fees. Over time, all the passenger seats inside of the aircraft were ordered to be removed. What had once been a commercial aircraft was transformed into something outfitted to carry diesel fuel at its owner's request. In fact, Aerospace Sales and Leasing intended to repossess the aircraft from Air Angola and fly it to South Africa to repurpose it, rather than let more dust pile on top of it in Angola. At least, that was the plan. On the evening of May 25th, 2003, something rather peculiar happened. Around 6 p.m., just as the sun had begun to set over Angola, two men were seen sneaking into the idle 727 aircraft without permission. One of the two men was Ben Charles Padilla, an American pilot and flight engineer. The other man was a mechanic hired from the Republic of the Congo, John M. Mutantu. It was unclear to witnesses of the incident whether or not there had been anyone else aboard the aircraft that evening. However, what was inherently clear was that neither of the men on the aircraft were certified to operate a plane of that caliber. Although Ben Padilla was a certified pilot, he was only qualified to fly a small private aircraft, nothing near the size of the 727. In fact, that particular Boeing model usually requires at least a three-person aircrew on board before taking off, not two underqualified men. Nevertheless, with Padilla assumed to be its pilot, the Boeing 727 roared to life and began going down one of the airport's runways without communicating to any of the control towers. Various tower officers tried tirelessly to make contact with the aircraft as it zigzagged across the runway, but they received no response from anyone on board. All of the plane's lights were off, and the whole aircraft was ghostly as it took off southwest. The 727 bellowed out over the Atlantic Ocean and disappeared. Neither the plane nor the crew piloting it were ever seen again. The freakish and erratic nature of the departure triggered a frantic search and investigation. The United States' two primary security organizations, the FBI and the CIA, dove into attempting to locate the plane right away. Officials believed wholeheartedly that the aircraft could have served as a flying bomb if it fell into the wrong hands. Right before the incident, the 727 had been filled with 14,800 gallons of fuel, which would have enabled it to have a potential range of up to 1,500 miles without stopping. The only communication from the stolen aircraft was when someone aboard the 727 asked for landing permission in the Seychelles, the small island nation located in the Indian Ocean east of Africa accepted the landing request. The Boeing 727, however, 
never attempted to land there. The 28-year-old 200 Series 727, with a tail number of N844AA, was never discovered on land or sea. The Boeing 727 serves as the single largest aircraft in history to have ever disappeared without a trace. Which begs the question, how does a 727 disappear into thin air? Well, there are a variety of ideas surrounding its disappearance. Since the FBI and CIA had initially believed that the aircraft was stolen to serve some kind of terrorist attack, they immediately dove deep into the investigation of its disappearance. When there were no sightings reported of the aircraft, or of any recent plane crashes in the surrounding area, it became evident that it was not being used for terrorism, but rather something else. However, that something else posed a puzzling question to those trying to unravel the aircraft's disappearance. Investigators started by digging up as much information as possible regarding the men that were assumed to have been piloting the plane by themselves. Ben Charles Padilla, the man thought to have been actually flying the plane, was 50 years old at the time of the incident. His family remarked that Padilla had an intense love for airplanes since he was a child. His affinity for aviation and his desire to push the limits of the sky led Padilla to take flying lessons in his mid-twenties. It was then that he got his first certification to fly small private aircrafts and later on became certified in airframe and power plant mechanics. Padilla's sister claimed that he had been mechanically gifted his whole life. It was his passion. Prior to the incident, Padilla lived in Southern Florida with two kids and his fiance of 15 years. Although the two never officially got married, Padilla had ensured that his fiance would have power of attorney in case anything happened to him. This also meant that most of his possessions would go to her. When investigators attempted to run a background search on the second person confirmed to have been on the Boeing 727, they found nothing. All they knew was that the man's name was John M. Mutantu and that he was from the Republic of the Congo. Both Ben Padilla and John Mutantu had been working with Angolan mechanics to get the aircraft flight ready. At the time of the incident, Padilla was a freelancer who had worked with aerospace sales and leasing's owner, Maury Joseph, on two occasions prior to the Angola assignment. When Joseph had needed the Boeing 727, registered N844AA, to be repossessed, he sent Ben Padilla to oversee all necessary repairs. He was Joseph's acting agent, so to speak. Padilla worked at the repair station and mostly supervised the men working on getting the massive aircraft ready to return to the skies. He also was in charge of hiring a pilot and co-pilot to fly the 727 over to Johannesburg, where a new buyer was awaiting its arrival. Just two days before the aircraft was scheduled to leave Luanda, Padilla continued to do his job in every way necessary. He made rather normal plans with Air Gemini, the Luanda-based airline that operated the repair station, to have the aircraft moved out to one of the runways. Moving the aircraft from the hangar to the main runway was necessary since the crew needed to run all three engines at the same time, at full power, for a systems check to ensure that it was ready to be airborne. The morning of May 26th, just hours after Padilla had mysteriously boarded the aircraft and disappeared into the sky. Maury Joseph received a call informing him that some unknown crew had taken the plane without permission. Joseph immediately notified American officials and stated that they needed to alert all aviation officials that a plane had been stolen. From there, it was necessary to call every airport that had runways large enough to handle a 727 landing. No one knew where the aircraft was headed or why Padilla had so suddenly decided to abandon the life he had made for himself 
to go on a joyride of such proportions. Padilla's brother, who was interviewed dozens of times after his brother's disappearance, has repeatedly stated that he does not believe that his brother flew away in that Boeing 727 willingly. He believes wholeheartedly that the plane was likely hijacked by some kind of terrorists who needed a pilot, even if they were not qualified to properly fly an aircraft of that stature. If this is the case, Padilla's brother believes that Padilla was either killed or held hostage by whomever his kidnappers were. However, Padilla and his brother had often talked over the possibility of an aircraft hijacking, as it was not unheard of in his line of work. On one occasion, Padilla had stated that he would rather purposefully crash an aircraft than fly it properly if it were hijacked. If the 727 was crashed, bits and pieces from the wreckage have never been discovered or identified. In the summer of 2003, just months after the Boeing 727 disappeared, a plane resembling the description had been sighted somewhere in Papua New Guinea. Almost immediately after the sighting was reported to the FBI and CIA investigators, a rumor began to spread wildly that the plane was the same one that had been stolen from Angola. However, when officials looked into the claim and the rumors, none of them turned out to be true. Padilla and the Boeing 727 were still untraceable. Eventually, the disappearance of the 727, Padilla, and Mutantu lost its sense of urgency. It was evident to the officials investigating the case that Padilla no longer posed an immediate threat to the United States, nor any other country. This de-escalation of the situation led more and more officials to believe that the plane was stolen as part of a financial scam on behalf of the owner himself, Maury Joseph. One of the primary investigators on the case stated publicly that it was never clear whether it was stolen for insurance purposes by the owner or whether it was stolen with the intent to make it available to unsavory characters or whether it was a deliberate, concerted terrorist attempt. But there was speculation of all three. It was not wholly impossible for Joseph to have staged the entire disappearance. In fact, there was a lot of motive to support the idea that Joseph was trying to commit insurance fraud. The aircraft was in a bad state of repair at the time, and he had known it was basically just a big source of parts to sell. If the aircraft were to have gone missing in the sense that it was hijacked or stolen, Joseph would be able to file a claim on it. Besides, Joseph's history with faulty insurance claims and companies that ended up bankrupt was not short. Without the 727 ever having resurfaced and no physical evidence being discovered, there is no real way to know what exactly happened on that fateful night of May 25, 2003. Some say it crashed into the ocean shortly after taking off, as Padilla had no experience flying an aircraft of that caliber. Others claim it was shot down with a missile by the Angolan Air Force in an attempt to avoid conflict. Another possibility is that it was stolen on behalf of a drug cartel. After all, the cleared out seats would allow their operation optimal storage for illegal exports. Whatever the case may be, Ben Padilla piloting the stolen Boeing 727 into the sunset is the single largest aircraft disappearance to occur without any trace. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to hit the like button and subscribe. A playlist is going to pop up right now with more videos you'll love. See you guys next time.